Random processes. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Welcome back. This is random processes, and we're going to cover random processes from three aspects. Uh, we'll start by looking at the random processes in the temporal domain, in the time domain. Then we'll look at random processes in the spectral domain, in the frequency domain. And finally, we'll apply both of these time and frequency domain concepts into linear systems. So we'll see how to find inputs, outputs when they are random. And this is why we need to look at random processes in time domain and in frequency domain to be able to apply these concepts to the application when we look at real systems. Another name for random processes is stochastic processes. Random or stochastic processes. So we are ready to go now and we'll start with the first part related to the time domain concepts. Here is the plan for the temporal characteristics. We will start with quick introduction, then we'll go on to random process concept, and then we'll look at joint distribution, independence, and moments. We'll look at stationary and correlation functions. We'll focus more on Gaussian random processes, then we'll look at a Poisson, of Poisson random processes, and we'll also look at time averages and ergodicity. We'll also conclude with some techniques to measure correlation functions. Let's try to understand what a random process is. We'll take it from an example and then we'll give some formal definition. So what you see in the diagram here is uh, three realizations, if you like, three samples. And here, I would assume that this is, let's say, the temperature of students as function of time, or the GPA, or the weight. It's changing with time. So the first sketch, the first curve highlighted, is for the first student. Similarly, we can have another realization. And the third one. Every one of them represent one student. So we can think of our random process as capital X representing a random process, then we have two variables, T, time, because things are considered versus time, and then the sample that we pick, the student, for, have, for example, we can have student number one, sample number two, number three, and so on. There are many things in real life which need to be represented as function of time, or even function of space. We'll focus more on time, but it's the same concept. In images, maybe videos, you need to look at space also. We will consider time signals, which vary with as function of time. And this is needed for desired signals, like representing uh, communication signal to be communicated, or even the undesired signals like noise. In these diagrams, we have lots of... Uh, we have three cases here, and if you want to think about them for a second, if you fix S, then you get one realization or one ensemble of, of, of this member of random processes, or we get one sample function. Every student in the class, his change on GBS function of time could be looked at as a, a realization of the random process. Remember that we can just stick to discrete signals, I mean deterministic signals. But our progress in life, our progress, our prosperity will depend on how much we can represent random signals. We cannot just stop with the deterministic signal. We can say we cannot do anything with waveforms that are random. We need to know how to deal with them. The set of all samples is called ensemble. And as I said, every one of them could be called realization or ensemble member or sample function. That's if we fix S. Also, if we fix the time and we fix T, now we give it some indices. If we fix one time here, one time instant, the values across the time axis give you a random variable. So, so far before, we were dealing with random variables. Any vertical cut here will give you a random the value I mean across all these values, these, all these cuts, all these times, give you a random variable. If you are just interested in one instant of time, 
T3 for example uh, T3 or T2 and then you have a random variable if you look at one of these we have a sample realization of a random process if you consider everything here then you have a random process that I want to know all students with all GPAs and how they change with time and how they are related to each other that's a random process now that we have given some examples let's look at, at, at the formal definition of what a random process is consider an experiment specified by the outcomes S from which from some samples capital S this is my class all right and we also are given the probabilities so if we have all of this then we can define the output or the outcome of this sample space as small s and we can assign a function of time according to the role which means for every um, realization we have we have to look at time and specific sample where of course t is indexed it could be discrete or continuous in that case we have a random variable which depends on which sample do we pick and we observe every sample as a function of time we have created an index family of curves or variables given by the following which we call a random process or if you want to sound more fancy we call it stochastic process we usually uh, just for the sake of notation we drop the variable s the dependence of the students and we say just it's capital x of t remember before we were saying just x to represent a random variable a random variable and then we add the time it becomes a random process uh, in the following we look at classification of random processes we have a continuous time process in which the time axis is continuous like the example of thermal noise here so we have continuous processes usually if the time axis is discrete like your GBA changes at the end of the semester then we have a sequence so a keyword here we have a random process or random sequence they refer to the same thing but random processes usually when we have time axis which is continuous and a sequence when we have the time axis is discrete in terms of notation we can if, if you are looking at discrete time you can say that I'm looking at multiples of a certain value t so we have we observe the time at n times t so this is a random process if you just want to use the other notation we can put a square bracket and then we have the index number here either the full time here instant or the index number so we have the first sample second third and so on thinking of the x-axis the time axis and the y-axis the amplitude we have amplitude and we have time for every one of them we could have continuous or we could have discrete so time could be continuous or discrete amplitude or if you call it alphabet could be continuous or discrete in total we have two by two we have four possibilities the curve shown here on the side is continuous alphabet random process the time and the alphabet are continuous I can have any value on the amplitude and any I have continuous values on the time axis the second option is still a time it's a random process because the time observed is continuous but you can see that for the alphabet we are jumping here either they get this value or that value so either you get um, just to make it clear here either you get this value or that value there are no values in between an example of discrete alphabet random process the two at the bottom we'll call them sequences because the time axis is discretized you can see here that we have kind of circles to illustrate that we are picking certain time instances so we have continuous alphabet random process random sequence or discrete alphabet random sequence there could be other classifications but this is one of them so the second classification another way is to classify random processes 
is to look at discrete it's look to it's look at deterministic and non-deterministic processes so how come deterministic when we have a random process let's see exactly what we mean when we say deterministic random process or non-deterministic random process the first one is the non-deterministic random process it's defined to be where the future values cannot be predicted from current values and this is most of the random process in real life are non-deterministic speaking sorry speaking of future now to make it clearer let's look at the deterministic case in the deterministic case like the following example we're picking um, a sinusoidal signal in the first example the amplitude is con is random while so it could be this one it could be that one but once the signal is selected once s is selected there is in terms of time all what comes next, next is deterministic so if you look at this shape and you know it's a sinusoid you can tell the values at any instant of time so we call this deterministic another example for deterministic is when the amplitude when the phase itself is random so every time we change the phase so it could start from here it could start from here whatever it, it, it just different phases but once you get the signal the future is not random uh, I mean the future is deterministic the beginning once the beginning is known the future can be told or can, we can tell the, what the future is so now uh, a random process that's completely uh, non-deterministic would look like for example the example I shown before like uh, your temperature or your uh, say weight it varies around a certain value it can go up after lunch maybe down changes a little bit but I cannot tell exactly what comes next because there is no specific pattern so you have deterministic and non-deterministic random processes so uh, of course it will be easier to deal with deterministic like in this example we are limiting the amplitude to be minus one and one and the phase to be from minus by two by in many of the examples we are showing deterministic but we know that real life is more of being non-deterministic